Hello, everyone. Welcome to QNet Live Show. I'm Sam, your host today. And today's topic is the introducing of the uh, our newly uh, uh, newly new product TS three two eight. So uh, today we we uh, invited the PM Dan, which is well, basically we can say he's the father of TS three two eight, and he will show us. Uh, the advantage and the features of TS three two A and why we are promoting uh, this product, this model at this time. And first of all, we can see that uh, TS three two A is a three bay NAS and it provides a RAID five support for optimum storage uh, utilization and data protection. So, uh, okay, so let's talk about something about uh, RAID. Okay. We have RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, yes. or some some people will use like RAID 50 or yeah, 60. Yeah, 50 or 60. Yeah, but uh, <coughs> in so many different RAIDs, uh, why we will uh, promote to use RAID 5 and why RAID 5 is somehow better than RAID 0 or RAID 1 or even any other different kinds of RAID functions. So uh, we will talk about this later. And then I think it's now maybe, uh, why don't we just get into the PowerPoint? Yeah. So uh, first we will see, we defined TS328 as a home NAS, and then it's a budget-friendly NAS with RAID 5. So we provide if, uh, good efficient and uh, the good protection to your NAS. So why? First of all, we can see that uh, this is a comparison for uh, RAID 1 and RAID 5. And why we will promote a 3-bay NAS to use RAID 5 between like a 4-bay NAS for RAID 5 and 2-bay NAS for RAID 1. Okay, <coughs> so uh, as everybody knows, uh, the, the minimum how the mm -hmm. requirements for RAID 5 is 3 HDDs. Yes. So <coughs> you can see in our bottom line, mm -hmm. uh, in Entry level NAS, we have two bay or four bay NAS, this is a common, common series. But uh, when you use a two bay NAS, you need to do the RAID protection. Mm -hmm. So for RAID 1, uh, RAID 1 protection is use the, the data mirroring, mm -hmm. so, which means you only use only one HDD. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you want to use RAID 5, you can choose only four bay NAS yes. in current, on current market. So if you use four bay NAS to build a RAID 5, uh, actually, you can use three HDDs, but uh, for some people, they think uh, three HDDs maybe cost uh, cost much. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> so between these two uh, situation, we we create the TS three twenty eight to give you uh, the three banners to to build a RAID five, and in, and you can see from this diagram, if you use two banners to build a RAID one. The HDD utilization is only fifty percent. Yes. But if you use Ray Five, uh, Ray Five, uh, you can use two HDDs. The HDD utilization is about sixty-seven percent. Okay, yeah. so let's imagine that if you are choosing two six TB uh, hard disk for a RAID one, we will only get like because two uh, di uh, divided by two. Yes. Uh, so we will only get one six TB storage capacity. But if we are choosing the Three, uh, three TB hard disk. We will get like around sixty-seven percent and equals to around six TB. So basically, mm, uh, to choose three now, uh, three three hard disk and use Ray Five will get a better and huge, huge uh, storage capacity than yes. using Ray One. Yes, that's right. So we, uh, okay, now we know this, and then we keep on going to see. Some people will ask, okay, but two hard disk, I think the total cost will be lower than three hard disk, but is that true? Let's take a look at this one. <clears throat> okay, so this is a simple calculation. Mm -hmm. if, um, if you are going to buy HDDs and you need, um, for example, 60 mm -hmm. terabytes cap capacity. Okay. So if you have one two bay NAS, you have to build a RAID one. You have to buy two uh, 6 TB HDDs and here is the information I searched from uh, Amazon mm -hmm. in, <clears throat> in the end of uh, February. So you can see if I buy two 60 terabytes HDD, mm -hmm. uh, one, 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 
one HDD is about USD dollars, uh, 189. So if you want to use two banners to do a ray one, you need to, it takes you about 378 dollars. Okay, so basically the, <coughs> the budget will get higher. Yes, that's yeah. right. So let's, uh, let's see the right diagram. If you can, uh, you see, if you want to use a three banners mm -hmm. to build ray five, you need only need to buy three, uh, mm -hmm. three, 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 three HDDs. And uh, per, 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 per price is about $100. Okay. Yeah. So the total cost is about three, uh, $300. Okay. So basically we will give you more storage capacity, but with a lower total cost, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. So basically two parties, <coughs> the, the cost is not uh, necessary uh, lower than three. Yes, that's so, right. Okay, so let's take a look at okay. Let's take a look at the uh, SSD support. Okay, basically this is a three bay NAS, but you can choose to choose uh, to to install like one SSD and the other two for HDD. Yes, and then they build a RAID one. But why? Because SDD you can use it for catch. It yes. will give you a better efficient while while you are like saving or loading, uploading, downloading your your data files, and also you can choose three HDD as RAID five. Yes. Yeah, there will be no problem. The flexibility is as well. Basically, it's pretty 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 good. So we can see for the next page, like uh, we will show you briefly about. The, 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 the most important hardware yeah. like the CPU, the processor. Yes. We're using the Realtek RTD uh, 2096 quad core, yes. 64 bit, 1.4. Yeah, by processor. Yeah. And also the hardware encryption engine is inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to uh, take care of the, the DDR program because if you remember our, uh, our previous market uh, products, TS28A. 20, yes. No, DD, the RAM is only one gigabyte DDR4, yes. but in three, uh, TS 320, 3228, the RAM is upgraded to two gigabytes. Yes. So uh, we will show you later why is that important that we upgraded the the RAM into two gigabyte. So what will you have while choosing this TS328? Like we can see here is the front panel and the back panel. Basically, we still have everything together. Like you can have two USB uh, 3.1 gen and then like the 3.5 millimeter light out jack and the beauty speaker. Also, uh, basically we have everything right here. And then we can see we have a 9x9 CM system fan. But for this fan, mm, let's take a look at this one. Basically, some people will think that okay, uh, a fan like that should be uh, should be loud while it's working. Yeah. And this page is to show you that uh, since it's a home NAS, it's a home based NAS, yes. we suggest like uh, Soho people or a small office or maybe or small workshop uh, yeah. or you want to build your own business. Yeah, even cafeteria. Like we uh, we we use. Uh, the, we, we, we try to make this NAS like more uh, lower power consumption Yes. and then the lower uh, noise while the, the fan is working. So we can see the noise level while it's working is only at 16.5 60, dB. Yes. And then we see, we can see the standby power consumption and operating power consumption is quite low basically compared to other like enterprises uh, enterprise level NAS right? yeah as we said this is a home NAS so mm -hmm. basically you will put it on in your home maybe on your desk or on yeah. your living room so uh, the power consumption and the noise is what we concern for yes. this product mm -hmm. so we see we have seen the uh, blue arrow and the red arrow which means this is the for the heat. Yeah, this Change is the airflow. You can the airflow from the from from the front and uh, bring the heat to uh, outside to the machine from the back. Okay, yeah. understood. So this one is also which is very important. Uh, for this TS three two A, we provide two advantage. Like first, we can see at the left side is the toolless installation. Um, Basically, for hard disk installation, we have two ways. Right, the first one is we will use a uh, screw. Yeah, screwdriver. Yeah, and the other is the screwless, but we still have two, uh, like like I this one, and we will fix it. 
Yes. After we put the hard disk into the jack and then we oh. fix from the left and the right side. Yes. But for this TS32A, we use another new way. Yeah. It's also screwless, but you don't have to open the jack and then screw uh, and then lock the jack. Yes. Because for my own uh, experience, the, the the lock is easily to disappear. I just don't know why. Oh, disappear. Yeah. And then the right side, we can see we use another method to cover all the hard disk so that you can prevent the misshaping and and have theft. Yeah, and test it. Uh, mm -hmm. Because <coughs> because some some users they don't want to their HDDP touched mm -hmm. or uh, maybe be stolen. So yes. we use a hidden uh, the, the hidden design to mm -hmm. cover mm -hmm. all the HDDs. Yes. So we can uh, uh, update it to prevent HDD mishandling and anti theft. Mm -hmm. okay. And the most important of all is it's a hard part. Uh, hard swappable and invisible slots. Yes. So we focus on the hard swap part. Since it's a RAID 5 uh, machine, Yes. so uh, RAID 5 means when you have uh, one hard disk down, yeah. it's okay. You just have to change the hard disk. Yeah, you don't but, need to turn off the system. Yes, so we can provide you a more stable working, uh, working environment yeah. for your NAS. Yeah, 24 yeah. hours. And non-stop. Yeah. And then uh, we will just take you uh, to a demo that will show you how to open the, the, the cover and how to change the hard disk. So we change into our demo, uh, demo live scene. Thank you. Okay, so you can see this, uh, this is a TS328. And um, we can remove this case by just with three screws and because to save the time, I, I remove the screws in advance. So you can see here, so I just uh, slide it and we I can open the case. So here you can see there are three HDD trays inside here. So as I said, it's a tourless, it's a tourless installation. So just uh, easily to pull the tray out. Okay, so this is the tray, our tourless installation tray. So I will show you how to install a 3.5 inch HDD. Okay, so this is a 3.5 inch HDD. So you can see that on the tray, we have four pins in blue here. So just align the four pins to, to the holes on HDD. Like this. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, very easy to install. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And don't take you so much time. You know, you don't need to worry about if I miss the schools mm -hmm. or I need to find a school driver. You don't need it. So just, it's very easy. Okay. So <coughs> we said the TS328 can support SSD cache. Yes. So I will show you how to install the SDD. Okay. TS328, we uh, there are 2.5 inch HDD, HDD base here, mm -hmm. it's bundled under the one. So I will show you how to install the, the SSD. So just remove it from the tray, release. Okay. So here is a SSD, so just easily to pull, pull it in. Okay. Then <coughs> connect this tray base to the caddy. Yeah. Okay. So now you can use your SSD. So we pull it back to the machine. Okay. okay, so I finished the installation. It's easy. Yeah, very easy. So let's go back to our PowerPoint and thank you again. Well, I think uh, it's very easy for everyone to try to install your own hard disk or your SSD. So this is very important for us. If you have uh, any problem with your hard disk, you can easily change that and uh, thank God it's a 
has one about uh, yes. home home you home base NAS. So we don't have to worry about if we are going to turn off the machine and 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 maybe we will lost some data file yeah. while you are doing the backup or any other data transmission. So after we uh, after we tell you all the features and the functions about the TS three two eight, we are going to enter the next topic, which is also very important. Why we are using NAS? Because we want to save our data. Uh, but is that really safe that we just save all the data into the NAS? I don't really think so. Why? Because NAS is a product that can support you to control where you can put your, uh, your data files. But if the hard disk is good enough or health enough, we don't know that because basically we hope every one of you can get a good hard disk and work until you mm, ch want to change another one. But mm, the percentage of the uh, defected rate is not predictable. So uh, I think we will tell you something more about, okay, we have a NAS and then we try to uh, save, upload our data into yeah. the NAS, but how we can do to use the data backup. And we will talk about something more with uh, Mac computer user because we have another function from Mac is called Time Machine. So we will tell you what we will face while we are uh, uploading our data file and what can we do to solve all the problems and how can we do that. Okay, so we will take a short break and I will invite our uh, RD Norman to get to the live scene. Okay, we will see you later. Okay, now we're back. We have our PM Norman here. Hi. And uh, Norman is very familiar with the uh, uh, backup system. Like yes. We have different types of backup in our uh, QNAP system. So uh, how can we bundle the uh, backup systems and functions with Mac user time machine? It's very important. So uh, we will get, go back to our PowerPoint and then Norman will start to show us. The first is how can we do to backup uh, all the data files? Yes, and as a QNAP NAS, we have provided user, like the Mac user or the Windows user. Mm -hmm. You can, as a Mac user, you could use the embedded time machine software to back your whole system. Mm -hmm. But for the Windows, we also provide the NetBack replicator. Mm -hmm. It's the QNAP utility that helps you to backup your files, your system on our NAS, mm -hmm. but it's not enough. I don't know. Let's check on that. No. Yes. Because we think the hardware, like the hard drive, may be damaged in the NAS, even we have the RAID. Yes. Yes. So uh, <coughs> QNAP has provided technology to do the tech, uh, to do the snapshot for protecting your data. Mm -hmm. And as the PN Dan has mentioned, in this new model, we have uh, increased the memory mm -hmm. to, to to keep Two gigabytes up. DDR4. Yes. So it means we could take more snapshot. Okay. Yes. And for the hot NAS, it can take to 64. Mm -hmm. And for a single volume and not and long, we can take uh, more more to 32. So uh, what is the quality of the snapshot to the previous X to A machine? Oh uh, yes, uh, because uh, TS twenty eight A has only one gigabyte DDR four RAM, mm -hmm. so uh, based on the the whole design, um, the for the whole NAS TS twenty eight A can support just thirty two. Okay, but for single volume now it's only sixteen. So yeah. it's double. Yeah, it's double. double. Mm -hmm. So why is snapshot so important? Why we want to give you more snapshot? Snapshot is very. 
uh, important because it can give you like a different version of your backup uh, to your uh, to your data that have uploaded into your your machine. Yeah. So uh, if we have more snapshot, we can find more specific version to get back your original uh, data files in with after you save into your NAS. So let's take a look at this. Uh, okay. This time machine is a function that can support a uh, Mac computer, right? Yes. Yeah, and only Mac user can only use Mac time machine. Only Mac user can use NAS. So why is time machine with our QNAP NAS more faster and more safer? So okay. we take a look at this one. As I know, mm -hmm. Sam, you use the Mac, right? Yes. So how do you back up your data? Uh, every once in a while, I will... Okay, for every once in a while, that means when I found mm -hmm. that my hard drive is not enough, enough. so I will turn on my Google Drive. Oh, or okay. maybe when my Google Drive is not enough, I will turn on my Dropbox. And when my Dropbox is not enough, maybe I will find another account for my Google okay. Drive, something so you, like that. You try to put your data yes. separately to the, all the cloud, cloud yes. server. Yes. So you might sometimes forget where is your data. You may might yes. find the file A, but you forget to put it to a Google which account. A which account you yeah. know. And uh, it's a routine job, right? Yes. And it costs your time. Yes. So it's really not convenient for the user to back up their data. No, it's not. Yes. So the complete backup solution might complete the system backup mm -hmm. and also the uh, multi version backup. Mm -hmm. And also the data reduction, mm -hmm. backup encryption, mm -hmm. and a complete a user interface for you to restore your system and file. Okay. And uh, so Apple has provided this kind of backup solution for the user. It's called Time Machine. Mm -hmm. So it's Time Machine can give you the complete comprehensive backup. This means you could backup your whole system. So uh, above means if one one day your your hard disk is uh, broke down, and uh, you might need to recover certain. Yeah. So what do you expect? I, I just want everything back. You just want everything back. Yeah. But as your previous done, you back up your only the file to the cloud server. So at this time you can only roll back the yeah. file yeah. to your system. Yeah. But all the setting, all the preference, you need to re adjust. To again. Yes. So with the time machine, you could have the comprehensive backup mm -hmm. to, to the storage device. And while the disaster happened, mm -hmm. you just one click and all the system environment will come back to your Mac. Mm -hmm. Include all the settings, right? Yes. Okay, so I don't need to set, set all the settings by me, uh, one by one. No need. And to find uh, the, my preference, maybe sometimes I just forget. Yes. I don't need. I don't need to wait. Uh, waste the time. Wait time to find out which the yeah. best. Setting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and uh, time machine also provide the use the multi version backup, so you can choose. You can uh preview the content mm -hmm. of your backup and choose the right backup point to re restore your file. Okay, it's easy help you to management your file. And also, it's have the file level restore, system restore, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, and uh, about the backup encryption. Mm -hmm. Will you worry about of your backup data storing on mm -hmm. the external devices? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you should. Yeah, like but the third party, your third party drive on the internet. Yes, yeah. anyone if they they have to, they could stolen your data. Yeah, yeah. it's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So with the encryption technology, it can make sure all your data on the external device are encrypted. Mm -hmm. So no one can stolen from you. Okay. Okay. And about the backup measurement, the machine has a automatic measurement mechanism. It will allow you to keep uh, intensively the recent backup version. Mm -hmm. And for the older backup, it will uh, on the weekly basis to keep it. Okay. Yes. So uh, for this slide, we see the Time Machine external storage solution. Uh, I think many people are just uh, just like me. Yes. We will use USB to 
uh, do some bio backup and or we will choose Thunderbolt because it's faster. Yeah. And then some people like me, a Mac user, heavy Mac user, you might buy a time capsule Cap from Apple. Yes. But mm, why is choosing a NAS over all these three devices are uh, is a better solution for, for every user? Okay. Uh, uh, user might don't know mm. that NAS could be the external storage so solution mm -hmm. for the time machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, what the NAS, Kingdom NAS can provide the user, it has the high flexibility mm -hmm. of the expansion of mm -hmm. your capacity. Mm -hmm. So you can add more uh, hard disk mm -hmm. or you have the uh, high drive enclosure mm -hmm. or like the VJ bot, you mm -hmm. could increase the capacity yeah. by this kind of technology. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, besides this, we have the one gigabit Ethernet and the 10 gigabit Ethernet and also the Thunderbolt mm -hmm. 3. This kind of uh, this kind of interface will help you to enhance the transaction speed. Yes. Yeah. So it means you have you can quickly to finish your backup job. So uh, I think in these four solutions, only um, only NAS can provide Ray five. Yes. And uh, only NAS can provide uh, uh, extension storage capacity. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the flexibility, as you say, is better. So we we'll check on the next slide. Is the okay? So we can see so many, so many features. Features that yeah. uh, uh, is that only for uh, time machine or no? no? It is a uh, Kubernetes NAS can provide the user. Okay. Yes, as I mentioned, uh, Kubernetes NAS has a high storage capacity. Mm -hmm. So like the three two eight, mm -hmm. it has three bay. Yeah. So you can add more desk into mm -hmm. your NAS yes. and beside from this with the expansion enclosure mm -hmm. for the VJ bot mm -hmm. you will have a more uh, chance to increase more more capacity for your NAS okay okay and uh, while you put all the data into mm -hmm. your NAS mm -hmm. you might uh, think about how to access mm -hmm. and can not NAS provide variety of the protocols for you to access your data mm -hmm. like the Semba, mm -hmm. FP mm -hmm. and also the FTP mm -hmm. or you could access by your mobile apps. Mm -hmm. So okay. it's very easy and convenient. Mm -hmm. And uh, besides from this, you, sh you also could uh, sharing all your data on the NAS mm -hmm. to your friend, family or, or the colleagues mm -hmm. for your working. Mm -hmm. Yes. So as I can see here, um, basically when we Back up our files from computer into NAS. Yes, mm, that that is the first stage, first phase of our backing up. Yes. and when you have stored your data files into your NAS, since first thing we have verified, uh, we can prevent uh, we can prevent if the hard disk is breaking. Yes, yeah, and the second one is uh, NAS. We provide a snapshot function, so we can manage your version of your backing up files. Yes, and then the third one is the hybrid backup sync. The hybrid backup sync that we provide you a uh, uh, remote backing up, like yes. I have one NAS here and it has all the backup NAS and I can uh, back up the backup yes. into another NAS Location. in different places. Yes. Yes. So that, that is a trifecta of your protection. Yeah. And okay, we have talked about the time machine with the NAS yes. and we know the features and the advantage. So why? All the NAS users should find a Mac to, uh, sorry, should find a, a, NAS. a NAS to cope with your time machine. So here is how to set the time machine to the NAS. And since we will give you some live demo later, so we will just get you through all the pages uh, briefly. Like first, we just go to the time machine, right? Yes. And we click on the check to backup automatically, and then uh, we can we can see the other square in red next back up when on power adapter. So I believe that is not only for uh, NAS, right? If I'm choosing a USB or external, it is uh, also office. okay for you back up. Yeah, but sometimes we will face this problem. Okay, the scenario is when I power on my yes. Mac, my time machine will work automatically. But you expect, expect yeah. the time machine will work 
properly. Yeah, but yeah. if I am not inserting my USB, it's not working at all. Yes. So the same concept. If I want to back up into, uh, okay, my external hard disk or any other thing, if I am not put it in to my computer, the backup will, will not fail. Yeah, will fail. So that is very important. Why we can use NAS because we can see a select select this function right here. So we just easily choose the, the path into our NAS. Yes. And then when we uh, bring our computer home or into the office, basically we will, we will use uh, Wi-Fi yes. and it's a LAN internet environment. Under these circumstances, we will just set for that one time when we try to use the time machine for the first time, we just go, uh, we choose the right path into our NAS. And every time when I go back home, go back to office, I just power on my computer and the backup will automatically execute. Yeah, yes. so it's like doing it under the background. You you don't really know that is going on. Yes. Yeah, so it's very important and very convenient. So you can just throw away all your USB or your external devices yes. for storage. And then this, we will show you how to easy easily set up uh, through our QTS yes. and you will know the multi-layer protection for the backup and then we will have the uh, high performance for yes. transaction speed. Right? At least two interface we have embedded in our different models. Yeah, mm -hmm. the entire level now, now says. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it's uh, want to provide the, some workers might have the video editing mm -hmm. or the image processing. Mm -hmm. This kind of job will handle with the big files. Okay. Okay. So they need more faster interface yeah, yeah, to mm -hmm. accelerate mm -hmm. the backup job. Mm -hmm. Okay. Understood. So this is very important. Yes. But uh, uh, the 10 gigabyte and Thunderbolt, uh, uh, we have different model to support all the different functions, right? Yes. And that is an add-on function for our users to choose to have it or not. Yes. Yes, okay. that's right. Okay. So for here is how to prepare the NAS. Yes. Like we will just this is our before you start your time machine backup mm -hmm. you need to to prepare your NAS environment mm -hmm. and the step one is you need to enable the time machine support mm -hmm. through the hybrid backup sync you use the interface so it's so first we need to enable the time machine support on mac and the hybrid backup sync yes okay okay and the the, the second step is to set account mm -hmm. for you to back up your NAS. Mm -hmm. And the number three is to set up a, set up a maximum storage quota. Why we have to set up a maximum? Because you don't want all your backup, uh, all your backup that your capacity not enough, right? Okay. So you need to set the limitation mm -hmm. for the user to back up their data. Mm -hmm. And and uh, for each user, they can, could have their own quota setting. Oh. Like you said, I will give you 100 gigabytes mm -hmm. for your backup, and for the end, I also give you 100. Mm -hmm. And I can expect on my NAS, they will only cost 200 gigabytes. gigabytes. Yes. So like, uh, if I, I I use over 100 gigabytes, will I take his space? No, with this kind of quota setting, mm -hmm. you cannot use exist, exist this setting. So in... A normal way or a more average way. Okay. If you have not set the maximum storage, it will just uh, you. Uh, for example, you buy the Apple Time Capture, mm -hmm. and uh, your family are used the same same devices. Yes. So maybe one one uh your brother may have the higher storage space usage. Then they will occupy uh, the capacity mm -hmm. yes. you can use. So while we are both. Uh, backing up our yes to files. the sending uh -huh. and yes. he just took all of the space yes what about mine your job will be fail will, will fail right yes okay so this is very important why we can provide you a more safer uh, backup environment is because we can set up a maximum storage quota for each of your users so you don't have to fight for the storage space with yes. each other yes. you can just use your own and when is and when it reached the limitation, we will just override. Override. Okay, cool. It's just like you have the private storage space mm -hmm. okay. only for you. Okay, cool. 
So here is, and uh, after we prepare the environment on the NAS, mm -hmm. the next step is to set up all the setting on the Mac. Mm -hmm. And the step one is to select desk for the time machine backup. Mm -hmm. And it will be our NAS. Okay. And the step two, you could set some uh, file exclusion rules. What is file exclusion rules? And, and if uh, some files, if mm -hmm. you uh, co work with, with your colleagues, mm -hmm. maybe this file is temporarily stored on the NAS. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary to put it on, on the NAS uh, or your backup location. Mm -hmm. Like so, I have 10 folders, but I just want to back up for nine folders. Yes. So I can choose the, the, the one you can folder. Include the oh, one folder just don't back up that folder yes oh. and then you can reduce the storage space mm -hmm. and also the bandwidth of your mm -hmm. transmission okay understood okay so after you done the backup you could see the time much time machine backup through the file station mm -hmm. and uh, and here is the the backup result that you can see okay so this is what we will see on file station like yes. we see that we kind of we have Different, different different user, user. account, right? Yeah. We have uh, QSync Lab Mac Mini and we have QNAPS MacBook okay. Air. Uh, in this scenario, mm -hmm. all the users use the same account for the time machine backup. It's okay. called time machine. Mm -hmm. It's provided by the QNAPS NAS. Mm -hmm. Even all the users use the same account for backing up. Mm -hmm. Their data won't be mixed together. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So even if three of us share in the same, you will have data, your own folder. Can I download your backup files? Yes, you can. Okay. So we suggest user to use the multiple user account to back uh -huh. up their own time machine data, uh -huh. and others cannot access your backup data. Understood. Mm -hmm. And the more safer. Understood. So we just set different file folders and give them different authorities for yes. their account. Yes. Good. That's a good way. Oh, this is what we think on Mac, right? Yes. You can see the from the Mac. So uh, when you have some miss delayed on your files, mm -hmm. you may find find the date of the data mm -hmm. has been existed. Mm -hmm. So you can try to find the uh find your file through the timeline. Mm -hmm. As you can see it's uh Right, upper right. my head. Yeah, your head. Yeah, yes. So this is timeline you can through this timeline you can preview each time point oh. of the file content. Uh -huh. Then select the up uh, appropriate one to do the restore. Mm. Okay, I see. So I can just choose which version I want to pick up. Yes. No matter it's only uh in my Mac or it's already on NAS. And it's only it the backup is always on your NAS. Oh. So while you select the file and want to preview, it's just directly transmission from your NAS. Oh, yes. that's very easy. Yes. Okay. Okay. So uh, everyone, we just check on uh, the features and advantages of our TS328. And then we know how to uh, work the TS328 with the time machine for Mac users very easy. And what is the, um, what, why it is better for us and how important to back up your files with RAID 5 and have your backup sync. So now we're just giving you a live demo of how to set up your time machine and how to back up your files into the correct folder with the, uh, with a specific user yes, account, yes, right? Yes. So we change our uh, view into the, uh, into the demo. Thank you. Okay, as I mentioned, uh, in Kingdom NAS, we could support multiple users mm -hmm. to use the time machine, mm -hmm. and each user will have its own spaces for backup their data. Mm -hmm. So here's the setting page. We can find out the time machine in the backup server, mm -hmm. and then I have already enabled this function. Okay. And multiple user account support, and you after you enable it, mm. it means the the NAS user mm. could they uh, could use their own NAS account mm -hmm. to back up their data directly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's create a NAS user for backup our time machine data. Give him an account. Give him an account. The first step we I will create a user account. For Sam, 
because you're okay. in the Mac, right? Yeah. Okay. Same Mac. This account for you to backup your data. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as we can see here, has a setting for the quota. Okay. It means you have the 60 gigabytes for your backup, but it's not enough, right? Yeah, it's not enough. <laughs> Too small. Too small. Okay, so I will give you no limit. No, no, no limit. <laughs> Two hundred is enough. Okay. Okay. So no matter how big the the storage capacity I have, this one, uh, what's that? It's great for test. Your. Container boost. Mm -hmm. So okay. no matter how big, no matter how big the the storage capacity we have, yes, uh, uh, in us, we, uh, you can you can just only you you only want to share me like two hundred gigabyte. Yes, because I have other job to do. Oh, okay. not, cannot let you to occupy all the capacity. So right? my limit is two hundred. Two hundred. Okay. And okay. I can, I, can I change the code the code of uh, capacity later? Or oh sure. Okay. okay. Oh no problem. Okay. I will demo it. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, I create these users, and also one thing you need to remember, mm -hmm. I will create a share folder for same, yes. same mm -hmm. right? For you to put your backup data. So in the share folders, create a share folder. It's the same name, same Mac. So all my backup will go to this folder. Yes. Okay. You will see this folder, but you selected the disk for your time machine backup. Or maybe I can just choose a random folder. A random one? Like, uh, uh, like uh, any folders. Oh, sure, sure. Okay. It's okay. Be be by the setting of the permission, mm, I, I will open the permission of this folder to say Mac. Oh. Yes. The user can create previously. Okay. I create this. So, so you can use the exist. Okay, so okay. this is the authority setting, like Sam can only read yes, yes. and write Sam Mac folder. Yes. And like Norman can only go to the, Mac, uh, Norman, Norman Mac, Mac folders. Yeah. And you won't see mine or you cannot access yes. mine. So you, it can keep your backup data very safe. Yeah. Safely. And uh, after we set up the whole uh, user account, the share folder, then we have finished to prepare the environment on us. Mm -hmm. Then we change it to to the Mac. Okay. So only Mac, the first thing is we need to connect to a server. Okay, it's this IP right? Yes. Connecting. So we are connected to the to a remote server, it need to enter the My account. Same, 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 right? same Mac. Mac, yes, same Mac, and the password. Okay, then you can connect to the server. Okay, you can okay. see oh, all yeah. the share folder, mm -hmm. but you you only have the permission to access yeah, the same Mac. Mac. If you add other share folder, you might be failed. Okay, fail to access. So only I can access is same Mac, right? Yes. Okay, click okay. okay. Okay, now we're in. You're, you're in. We have mounted the same Mac on uh -huh. us through the same Mac. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, the next step is to set in the time machine. As you can see, you have already a backup to the TM backup. Mm -hmm. It's on the same NAS, mm -hmm. but it's used the a time machine dedicated account for the backup. Mm -hmm. And I can also add the disk I have previous month, the mm -hmm. same Mac, mm -hmm. I use the disk. I use the both. Mm -hmm. So it means Time Machine can back up the data to the two places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, as you can see, I back up automatically, but I can wait for too long, so I just back up now. Okay. Then the backup okay. Java is started. Only to send Mac. They will do it sequentially. Oh. Oh, sequentially. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So for a demo, I have prepared an environment 
now that I have finished my backup job. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, we enter to a time machine mm -hmm. and I can see all the backup data mm -hmm. okay. I have done previously. Okay. Okay. So network problem. Okay. So we enter time machine again. It will directly connect to the NAS mm -hmm. through the network. So you can see the right side is the timeline. Mm -hmm. It show every moment the data you back up. Mm -hmm. You have the time and the date. One, 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 one version hour. per hour, right? Yeah. It's uh, since uh, it back up period is around, around, hour, around, okay. around one hour. And I've tried to delete the file on the desk mm -hmm. and try to recover it yeah. empty the trash the church. okay so no more worry because i have done the backup one hours ago enter to the time machine and the see it's not i can see the desktop without no, those pictures yes, it's nothing okay it's nothing so i this big guy is a uh, oh. car music. So here's the previous version of the files. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I can choose them all and restore it. And now it's all on oh, the okay. It's not back very easy. Desktop. And it's all stored at my NAS, right? Yes. So all the files I back up, I back up to the NAS. NAS. Restore from your NAS, mm -hmm. the E is very critical. Okay, so I don't have to worry about the, the backup files will take the capacity of my computer. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And cool. you can see the CMAC is started to back up. Oh. And what is your code on? I have 200 gigabyte, but it's like I'm now backing up a file for 24, yes. around 25 gigabyte. You, will, you can see eventually, uh, like the TM backup, mm -hmm. I have setting the quota will be a uh, 1.1 .1 kilobyte. Okay. Uh -huh. So it will be the limitation you can pick mm -hmm. up. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay, so this is how we can uh, connect the Mac into the NAS with Time Machine. Yes. So the first step you have set is to uh, Prepare your let program. your Mac get the connection with your NAS. Oh, yes. And then the second step you have set is to let the Time Machine go to the correct path that yes. you have set. Yes. Okay, so then we can just uh, use the, the, the function of time machine. Yes. Very easy. So let's go back to our slides. Okay. And then we can see right here, I think this is the trifecta of your uh, data protection. Uh, like the local local side, we can use, okay, we can still use uh, NAS, right? Yes. And then we have RAID. And then we can also put the file into cloud like we have hybrid backup sync or something like that or yes. even we can choose to use the remote backup yes we remote all the data into another nas, NAS. so uh, no matter you have your uh, nas on the internet or uh, LAN internet environment we can all uh, help you and provide you a good way to support your uh, it data file backing up yes yeah. okay so uh, why we want to use and we want to promote TS32A is because this is the first uh, three bay NAS we have, and then that is a very economical uh, product version, and then it supports grade five, and it supports you to connect to your Mac with the time machine, and then of course we support a newer uh, hardware function is that we support your two gigabyte, so you will have double snapshot. Uh, quantities than before uh, than the previous uh, version that we launched in January, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, after we talk about all the backup uh, issues, we will talk about the other topic like the video transcoding, and then we can see that why were we why we want to talk about the transcoding because for now, 4K videos or even high resolution videos are uh, getting more and more popular. Many more people are trying to uh, change their television or trying to change their uh, uh, cell phone or their uh, recorder 
video recorder into a 4K resolution supporting product. But for now, we will mostly download in the and check the videos through maybe through internet mm -hmm. and maybe is uh, we want to see some movies in 4K that we have stored in NAS and we want to, we just want to use our cell phone to see the movie or we want to share the movie into another uh, remote devices. But here's one thing. 4K videos, the file is very big. Yes. So when we are trying to download it, we will see the the video is working like temporarily. It will stop at one cut and then maybe for several seconds and then yeah. go for next frame and next frame. The problem is because maybe we don't have that 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 good enough bandwidth. Yes. Or we have some other uh, unexpected problems. But basically, if we can check the 4K videos in a more faster way, yeah, in different kinds of uh, remote devices, how can QNAP NAS help us to do that? <coughs> okay, so TS328 is our first ARM architecture NAS, mm -hmm. which supports 4K video transcoding. Mm -hmm. So you can see, uh, as you Sam said, uh, the 4K video is very popular, it's getting harder, mm -hmm. uh, harder and harder. So um, we can expect the 4K, the, this, form, this format it will be the uh, the main, main, main model, uh, main spec in the future. So, uh, TS328 supports 10 bit, 10 byte, uh, 10 bit HEVC and H2, uh, H4264 transcoding. So, which means you can transcode the popular format like MP4, AVI, MOV, or FLOV to the, to the common, 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 uh, full HD. Mm -hmm and you can change to 30 frames per second. So this, this, um, this type is, is easy and good to use on your cell phone, your laptop, or your, uh, your notebook. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go to the next slide. So <clears throat> uh, the TS328 supports real-time or background chess coding. So we, we can see on the right chess coding. So immediately, if you download a 4K video and you like to see it immediately, so how do you do? Uh, maybe you can use your laptop or your notebook to play back the video. But sometimes, the, as you said, the video is very big mm -hmm. and sometimes it wastes your, your system Wait. resources. Mm -hmm. So maybe you cannot play, play it very smoothly. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this case, we can choose on the right choose coding. So you can see we can choose uh, many resolutions to just call a spoken video. Mm -hmm. So you can watch it immediately. And the second second one is background transcoding. So uh, if you uh, you like to watch movies, you like to uh, watch dramas, you can download them from in the morning to your NAS, and you can set an auto transcoding folder. Mm -hmm. And now you can move the videos to auto transcoding folders and the system will just call the videos automatically. So okay. when you go back to your home, you can uh, take your uh, your smartphone or your laptop and now you can enjoy the videos. Yeah, it's very easy. Okay, so uh, these two functions are very useful. The first one is for your uh, on-site watching, I can yes. say that. Yes. And the other is for like uh, video lovers. Yes, video lovers. Mm -hmm. So uh, after we talk about this too, I think that is the best we just show you yeah. how is the on-fly transcoding and then the background transcoding works. Yeah. So we get our thing back to our, uh, back to the demo. Okay. So, <clears throat> so I have downloaded the 4K videos to the NAS already. So uh -huh. you can see this folder. Uh -huh. Um, I downloaded some videos. Uh, this one is Jerry uh, Jerry Fish. Mm -hmm. It's 4K Ultra HD HEVC 10 byte. Uh, it's the format MKV. So <clears throat> I can show you how to watch it by on the branches coding. So just simply uh, push the the right button and play here. You can see uh -huh. there are so many resolutions you can choose. Mm -hmm. So we just choose the 
the one the four HD. HD. Okay. Yeah, it's the most common common spec here. So as we can see, the the four K video file for the jellyfish is like around nine hundred megabytes. Yes. Yeah, it's, so uh, it's very big. Yeah. And uh, if this file, okay, is now transcoding. Yeah. yeah, maybe how long for this seconds? file? Is? I guess about fifteen seconds. Can we, can we check? How? How? How can we check? It's a live stream. Oh, it's a live stream. Yeah, so we can see a thirty second video in around nine hundred megabyte. It's very big. I don't think if that is on my cell phone, I can see the video in four K that smoothly. But yes, less in ten seconds. Our NAS has transcoding the 4K video into 180p. Yes. So uh, we can now run to, uh, we can now see it very smoothly and still we have good enough resolution. Because mm, basically uh, to see 4K video, I think the, the more the screen is, the better the experience we will have. So if it's on the, if it's on the cell phone or tablet, maybe we don't really that much to need to have a 4k video yeah right so when we try to see the videos in our uh, remote devices we just want to get everything quick as quick as possible yeah so this is a very good way that our nas will transcode in the video for you and to to lessen the consumption of your internet bandwidth to give you a good video in a faster way yeah yeah okay let's check another video is from samsung is a uh, is a uh, is still the HEVC mm -hmm. uh, 10, 10 byte 4K video okay. here. Mm -hmm. So let's check it again. So we can choose um, the Full HD here. So okay. It's so the original file size is about seven seven hundred mm -hmm. megabytes. So we can see no it's screen. Not And you can see, um, <coughs> because some other some other companies they use the same CPU, mm -hmm. and you can see our quality is very good, and the texture is complete without broken, so we can play back it very smooth. Okay. okay. So after we see this, how how about we show the audience about the the, the backup transcoding? Backup transcoding. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> So how to set our auto choose coding folder? Uh, in the first we go to control panel, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we choose multimedia man management. Uh -huh. And you can see there's a tab auto mm -hmm. choose coding okay. folder here. So <clears throat> here we need to decide which folder you want to do the auto choose coding. Mm -hmm. So you so can press one. here eight. Then you can find that there's uh, all of your share folders mm -hmm. here. So we chose multimedia, mm -hmm. and I have created a background choose coding folder in mm -hmm. advance here. So we just click here and add. Okay. And so we can from, choose for which resolution we want to transcode. Uh, yeah, so you can choose from here. Mm -hmm. So we chose the most common, and it's not it's not a single option. You can choose many mm -hmm. resolution as options. many as we want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we chose the full HD here. And now remember, remember to use the apply. apply. Okay, so apply. Okay, now <coughs> we go back to file stations. Now we move this jellyfish to the auto auto transcoding folder. Okay. Copy to. Okay. This is very conscious coding. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the file is uh is coding to the auto just coding folder. So we can go back later to check the result. Okay, so let's go back to our PowerPoint. So uh these are the functions of our 4K transcoding yeah. and no matter is uh, on time or even is on uh, working at background. Yeah. So the next topic is about data management, which 
is why we want to tell you that we upgrade the DDR4 from one gigabyte, uh, one, one, uh, one, one gigabyte, gigabyte, one yes. gigabyte into two gigabyte. Why? Because as I've known that if you want to use QSearch and QFiling these two applications, you need to have your RAM at least at two gigabyte, yes. right? So why is QSearch and QFiling? Basically, uh, we will use FileStation, but for QSearch and QFiling, uh, it's a more advanced application for you to find your files, no matter it's pictures or it's PDF file or it's video, and to manage your uh, data files with QFiling. And if uh, you want to know more about QSearch and QFiling, we have more videos in our uh, QNet channel. So if you want to know more, you can just check out our other videos. And remember to give us a, a you can just subscribe our video so that you can see more of it. And then we have OCR. It's kind of new, right? Yeah, it's a new function mm -hmm. because um, uh, when you use QSearch, we usually use the keywords. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the, the words is in the is uh, like a picture format, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you cannot use the the keyword to find the name. So if you the OCR is a converter, you mm -hmm. can convert the pictures. Uh, the words on the picture to uh, editable format. So, for example, you can export export your picture to PDF or TST format. Mm -hmm. And now you can we can search, edit, and archive them. Okay, so it's more easy and like visualize all the data files. Yes, yeah, that is very important because we see and we will get to know it right away. That is more better than reading all the words and sentence or the name of the files yeah yeah and here is the user interface of our QSearch and QFiling so both of these applications are a better and a more advanced solution for you to archive and to search to manage your files so same uh, still the same thing if you want to know more about the QSearch and QFiling please go to our other videos yes yeah. So let's make a summarize of the TS32A. Why we want to suggest all the users can choose and consider our TS32A. First is uh, we have RAID 5 to, to the three bay NAS. And then uh, RAID 5 is a better way to provide you uh, your data protection. At the same time, we, uh, we can provide you a lower cost budget and then we can give you a higher hard disk uh, usage capacity. Yeah. So this is the first thing. And then the data safety, because Ray 5 can give you uh, the tolerance of your hard disk breaking. Yes. And then for NAS, we provide you snapshot. And then for Mac user or Windows user, we provide you uh, a solution to bundle our uh, snapshot and our backup functions with Time Machine yes. or with NetBank replicator which is our own application yes. right and then uh, for the video transcoding since it's a home-based NAS definitely we will want to put the cell phone recording or the uh, a download video in the NAS so that we can share to uh, many other people so uh, we have video transcoding if you are using a, a new cell phone and you can try to record your recording with 4K resolution and just upload it into your NAS and then when any of your friends or, you, or whom you want to share the video, you can just let them see the videos in 180p or even lower resolution to give them a better speed of downloading of your videos. And then we have on, on the fly backup transcoding. If you are a video movie lover, you want to see uh, like uh, all the uh, Grace Anatomy, the files, uh, the, the, the videos. You can just download the videos into your NAS and let it do the transcoding by itself. And when yeah. you go back home, you can see it completely. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is for now, TS328 support 2 gigabyte DDR4 RAM. Mm -hmm. So you can use QFiling and QSearch and our newly launched application QCR. So that three are a good uh, a good enough and better and more advanced way for you to visualize your stored data files and then a better way for you to uh, find your own pictures your data your videos maybe by color 
of the pictures or maybe by the face recognition recognition something like that so now all these functions are workable with our ts328 and uh, i believe the ts328 will uh, you will see on the market pretty soon like yeah maybe, pretty soon it's looking forward yeah. maybe one week later or two oh, weeks later yeah you will receive it's looking forward yeah and since we are promoting this i bet uh, when users i'm also a user so when i try to purchase something i will look at the cp value yes yeah mm -hmm. i want to spend less but i want to get the best yeah. so uh can our TS three two A provide our users to have this? I uh, only good can say I will give you the best price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so please stay focused on our website to mm -hmm. find the latest news. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. So when you see the TS three two A and when you see the price, I think you can also compare our TS three two A hardware and software uh, detail with like other other NAS from the market and you will see hmm, choosing QNF NAS is a correct choice for your life. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. So let's get back to our live view now. <coughs> and once again, we thank Dan and Norman to give us uh, such a detailed information of, uh, of the ts 32 a especially with the uh, full function of the backing up with uh, time machine. Time machine. Yes. Yeah. So if you like our video, you can just subscribe our uh, our channel and we will give you more and more video no matter it's on hardware or software or something deeper in the technician part. So uh, we will see you next time on QNF Live Show. Thank you. Bye-bye.